Uh, welcome to the uh, homecoming. It's good to have you. If you're visiting, if you're visiting, you've been here for five minutes. You're not a visitor anymore. You're a home folk, and you cut up and laugh just like we do. Because right, uh, I feel like God don't want us unhappy. He wants us laughing and cutting up and, and uh, having a good time. So I've had a good time already this morning. So it's good to have Southern Harmony with us this morning. And uh, you uh, be in prayer for them as they sing for us. Uh, and again, if you're visiting, we're, we're having dinner after church. So everybody go down to the fellowship hall down the hill and we'll have a good dinner afterwards. Um, we're having a fall festival. We just don't know, or I just don't know the date, and nobody's, what? November 6th. November 6th. There's someone that knows. I've asked four people, and I don't know. Then that's the right one. Did you hear that, Tony? You write her down. Yeah, okay. <laughs> November 6th. All righty. And if you've not noticed, we have a stranger in our midst. Could have Bob and Zona with us today. Got to call him out. So uh, just keep praying for Zona as she tries to keep Bob in line. She has a difficult time. I think about her all the time. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, any more announcements? Announcements? What I mean by announcements. Women's meeting, not this money, but next money. Money? Money? Money. Net money. All right. Don't forget that. Okay, uh, prayer list. Uh, everybody knows who I have on the prayer list. Uh, keep Melvin Page, uh, really keep Melvin in your prayers. And uh, keep uh, Bob's son Dale in your prayers. And Miss Fay, keep Fay in your prayers. Okay. Anyone else we need to add besides? I'm going to type this prayer list out and put sheets back there on the. I'm going to do that this week at work when they're not looking. The Garrett family. Yeah, I do too. Put a, uh, uh, pray for Buck Joel. He's. Uh, my cousin's husband in, in Nashville, um, they should be taking him off the ventilator this morning. Uh, hopefully everything goes well. Just keep, keep the, the Jewel family in your prayers. Um, and there's someone else, and I totally forgot who it was. So I'll, God knows who they are. So anyone else? Wow. All right. Unless everyone is stand, uh, Brother Johnny, lead us to the Lord in prayer for the ones that are sick. Dearly, Father, Lord, we want to come to you this morning and just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the great honor and privilege to be at your house this morning, Lord, because I know there's many other places we could be, but you've given us this great opportunity and privilege. I just ask and pray, Lord, that you would meet and gather with us. Father, you tell us we'd be past our cares and burdens upon you. Well, we've had a chance to do that this morning, Lord, but I'm confident that not all things were brought out. So please be with every single person that's able to represent here today. Be with those that are sick, Lord. Be with this service. Uh, be with the men and women that's going to sing for us today, Lord. I just ask and pray that you would give them a special blessing, Lord. The Father, help them to also bless us. Let us hear your word through the song, Lord. Uh, be with everything that's going to be said and done, Lord. And I just ask and pray that if there's anybody that's here that's lost, that's backslidden, that's burdened, that's troubled, that's tried, Lord, that today would be the day of a little bit of comfort and peace. So be with us, gather with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the precious and sweet name of your Son, Jesus, we thank you and love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to... All right. Uh, the pretty flowers here are, are in memory of Tommy Childs. Uh, this is the beautiful flowers in memory of our sweet husband, daddy, and papa as he celebrates his uh, one year anniversary in heaven please keep our family in your prayers and we all do miss brother Tommy but we know he's better off and he's having a great homecoming this morning so uh, he's looking down to keeping us but we do miss brother Tommy anything else 
Birthdays. Anyone have birthdays? Anybody going to tell on anybody? Wow, that's good. Anniversaries. Wow. Not a good... Who? You're just tomorrow. Well, we'll get you next Sunday. You, Kevin looks so excited too. Ours is next. There he's smiling now. He, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't get Kevin in front of trouble. Uh, he's bigger than I am. Uh, anyone else? All righty. Doctor D, you think we should have a small one or let them sing? All right. We'll, we'll do two in the choir. I want everybody. Y'all got to be good, okay? Home folk, you got to be good. Because I told these wonderful ladies that came with the singing group, I said, they'll do what I tell them. <laughs> and they laughed all morning long when I said that. But I want everybody to come around this way to go up to the choir so you don't trip over the chords. And I will block you. So come this way. <laughs> so we're going to go this way. It's good to have everybody laughing this morning. Yeah, having a good time. Where's the guitar players? I know y'all can play. I don't know what we're going to sing.
what I'm saying?
somebody's coming out. It's really, if anyone knows, we've got visitors, if anyone knows anybody that's looking at, at a piano player that's looking for a church to play in, give them, I'll give you my number, then give me a call. We need a piano player. And it was great having one this morning, plus the, the band. Whew, I'm fired up now. Let's go. All right. Oh, ushers, we've got to take that offering up. Yeah, this is just a regular morning offering, so uh, ask Brother Tony to lead us to the Lord in prayer. Lord, may come to you. Just thank you so much for this day in your house today, Lord. We just want to thank you so much for these people that showed up, Lord, and sang for us. We just thank you so much for them, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you so much for this homecoming we're having today and remind us of what we're going to have uh, in the future, Lord, with you, Lord. We just want to thank you so much. And I want to bring that prayer request again today, Lord. Just touch them in a special way. Bless this offering. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Good to see this number out this morning. It really is. Don't forget, next Sunday we start at 11. Yeah, I'm looking at y'all. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, someone asked, asked uh, Amanda to sing, so we're going to let Amanda come up and sing for a uh, song for us. I think we know it, so I can sing with it. God. 
Also good to see Sister Janice this morning. I see her sitting there now. I'm finally looking around. Just need to turn that off. It is an honor to have Southern Harmony with us. They've added on to the group. They just keep, keep getting better and better, I think. Uh, they've got a special song that I've asked Josh to sing for us. And so uh, you pray for them as they come. We just told them. They said, we're on a time limit. No, we're not on. You let the Lord lead you when it's. He tells you to keep going. We'll be here at 2 o'clock. We don't care. All right, so come on.
Good to be here this morning, folks. Anytime I'm amongst them, I feel at home, brother. Uh, I've been instructed not to talk too much this morning. Uh, something that I usually don't have an issue with, uh, never have, but uh, apparently I do it too much when I stand in church. But main reason why is we're doing a live recording, folks, this morning. Uh, um, uh, it'll be our first one, and uh, so I'm going to make this kind of kind of brief. Um, uh, but. I'm not going to, everywhere we go, I'm going to say this, and I'm always going to say this. Folks, we're here to mind the Lord this morning, and we ask that you all mind the Lord. If the Lord puts it on your heart to come to this altar, that's what you need to be doing. Don't be letting us interfere or, or thinking that we're going to interfere with that, because you're not going to ir- interfere with us, and we're not going to interfere with the Holy Spirit and what the Lord has put on your heart to do. So if it's, he put it on your heart to come to this altar and pray this morning for whatever reason. If you're here lost this morning, you're definitely a very special guest. Uh, and we will pray with you and for you. I can promise you that. Um, real quick, though, over here to my right, Brother Don Russell, he's singing tenor with us. And he's kind of trying to. Trying to. He's got some allergy issues, some sinus issues going on. He's kind of struggling with. So y'all pray for him. Oh, here to my left is Brother Evan Griffin. Now, he's new. He just started. He started us back kind of the first year. He wasn't here, uh, wasn't with us the last time we were here. Uh, very tickled and very blessed to have this young man uh, singing uh, lead and barely coming with us. Uh, over there on the bass, uh, if you haven't figured that out, is my son, uh, uh, Nathan. Of course, he's been here uh, with us pretty much since we got started. He'll be singing here a little bit as well. On the guitar, that young man is Brother Jonah Frills. Uh, 16 years old, and he, uh, Lord, put on his heart to, to be uh, to come and out and worship with us, uh, lift up the name of the Lord with us. He'll be singing as well, and uh, very Lord bless us with a lot of talent. Nathan and Jonah, they they play the piano too, and they swap out guitar and bass. And like I said, we'll, they'll be up here singing in a minute. And then of course, Brother Roger Gregory. Uh, he's uh, we're just so blessed to have him. Uh, very good piano player, and uh, he's. He's hung right in there with us. And I'm not going to go any, can't go without saying this man right here sitting on the front pew. That's Josh Gregory. That's Roger's son. Uh, he has been such a help to us. He's been there for just about anything we've ever needed. He's helped us with sound system. He's a sound guru. And uh, anytime we have a problem, all we got to do is call him. But usually he's got the answer just like that. And he's actually doing the live recording for us this morning. But they're very thankful and, and, and blessed to be called him. Uh, and I'm Josh Thorne. We make up Southern Harmony, folks. We're here worshiping the Lord this morning. Go worship with us. Uh, this next song we're going to do is a new song for us. The Lord gave me the, the, the privilege to write it down, uh, and it speaks to all of us as Christians because there's a lot of things going on in the world right now trying to make us doubt what we believe in. But if you've been a Christian, the Lord, the God has saved you, and the blood of Christ has been applied to your life for any length of time. You've seen all these things happen that we're going to be thinking about, okay? You've seen people healed that were not, Amen. that were given terminal diagnosis, and the doctors can't explain what happened. Uh, they're just, they're healed because God intervened. God's still in control of all things. Amen. You've seen these things happen in your life. You've seen, the, you've seen people who you never thought in a million years would get saved. They're just, in your mind, our mind, they're just too, too, for lack of better words, bad. But yet, uh, God saw fit to save those people. You can't, there's nobody can make me doubt what I believe in because I've seen the power of God in his hand in everything uh, in, in, in my life and in other people's lives. So y'all just pray. I'll give no
cried, Lord, please save my precious soul that is burned out for lifting. He's a new man made whole. Don't say it didn't happen. Don't say it's not real. I've seen it with my Oh! 
next song we're going to sing is, a, is another <coughs> new song for us that uh, Brother Roger wrote a long time ago. It'll take off, Roger. We'll need you here in a minute. All right. Uh, that uh, Brother Roger wrote a few years ago, him and another young man. And uh, basically, the Lord gave this song to him and inspired him with a song just from an old picture. And this old picture is a, is a song that, uh, uh, or it's a picture that we've all probably seen before hanging up in our grandmother's house. And it has Jesus stepping out of the tomb. And I told the picture, he's just stepping out of the tomb. And that picture represents that one step. That one step that Jesus took out of that tomb and everything that that entailed and how that changed the world forever. And uh, this is a, it's a very powerful song, uh, but has a very simple message behind it. <laughs> Several times, so y'all just kind of have to be 
be patient with us a little bit.
Now this song right here is one we've been doing for a little bit, but if it has any more meaning for any other time, it's now. It's an old song, but uh, we know very well by if you if you watch the news, listen to the radio, anything that there's not really any good news of this world. But I can tell you where there is good news, and it's not of this world. And I can tell you that if you watch the things that's going on in this world, you know that the King is coming. And uh, that's what we're supposed to be working towards and watching for. The marketplace is empty, more traffic. I can see the marching throng, the flurry of God's trumpets, they spell the end of sin and wrong. Regal robes are now unfolding, heaven's grandstands now in place, heaven's choir is now assembled, start to sing amazing grace.
If you appreciated our singers this morning, would you give them one more hand this morning? I, I'm just going to tell you how blessed it's been already to be in God's house and how thankful we are for you all coming and singing for us and, and sharing your hearts. I, I, I was kidding with Johnny earlier about getting up and singing, but when you started asking about uh, or mentioning about people joining your group, I looked over and thought, Johnny, you didn't join their group, did you? Because I, I, Johnny and I, we have this friendship where, where I know that he loves to sing and I know that I love to sing, but the problem is we both know that nobody wants to hear us sing, so we know that. But we like to do it, right? I mean, we like to sing. Why? Because we know that God loves to hear us sing. I challenge you this morning as you've come to this place that as you've sat here and, and as you've listened, that you've not listened to be entertained, but that you've joined in with your hearts and with your spirit to worship God. Man, I, I'm, I'm tickled to death to know that God has not ever, ever, ever let me down. I'm glad to know that we have songs to sing about that God has not let us down. I like the fact that you sat there and you said, I've seen it with my own eyes. Boy, ain't you seen it with your own eyes, what God has done? Now, I'm going to have to move this. I'm going to end up killing myself if I don't. I, I'm excited this morning because I've seen with my own eyes what God has done. I want to take you back 20 years ago. You know, we're at homecoming, and, and it, it's a great time to, to gather together and to talk and to reminisce. But I want to take you back 20 years ago. By the way, our passage of Scripture is Hebrews chapter 6. And in Hebrews, we talk about and we read about uh, all these other folks that had gone before and, and had had shared the gospel, had lived the faith, and in fact, we, we call it the fellowship of faith, the, the hall of fame of faith, if you would, the, of, of these folks that just live by faith, and we read about it in, in Hebrews. And, and so we're going to read a little bit about that this morning on what we should be doing. But I want to take you back 20 years ago, and here's what I want you to remember. 20 years ago, our services for homecoming were much different during the month of October. You see, here's what had happened. In September 20 years ago, 
we had the 9-11 event. What were you doing 20 years ago for homecoming? You see a lot of different things happen throughout life, and that's one of those things where you sit there and you think about that homecoming, and you think, man, that was pretty rough. A lot of people were hurt. A lot of people were killed. A lot of people were depressed and discouraged. A lot of people were worried and in fear of what was going on. And in October of, 20, uh, or in October of 2001, we're sitting here talking about 9-11. And what just happened? Let's go forward a couple of years. Let's go forward about five years. And our folks have come back from over in the Middle East. They're, they're now at home. And, and there's a time of celebration during that time. And so you see folks change and you see the attitudes change. So in a five-year period of time, how drastic things have changed. Now, let's come forward to today. And today we're sitting here and we're gathered together. We've got a good crowd. We, we had uh, good singing. We're going to have the preaching. We're going to go have a great dinner. And we're going to be talking about homecoming 20 years from now. A little different than what we talked about that 20 year ago homecoming. But here's what I want you to know. Every person in this room, Every person that is here today is going to look back at some point in the future and say, what was I doing on homecoming of 2021 at Child's Memorial Baptist Church? You say, Tim, what do you, why do you say that we'll look back on this day? Because I believe with all of my heart, today is a day of decision making for every person in this room. And God's going to give every person in this room the decision to whether or not they're going to obey him or disobey him this morning. Now, if you have chosen to disobey God this morning, I want you to know there is going to be a period out there in the future, be it in this life or be it in the next, you're going to have to ask yourself this question. Why didn't I obey God? Now, here's the other side of that. If you choose this morning to obey God and do what he lays upon your heart, there's going to be a time out there in the future, either on this side of heaven or in heaven itself, where you're going to know within your heart that God was pleased with my decision making on that day. You see, we gather together this morning and we forget that our decisions do have an impact on things. And I'm going to share with you an impact in my life. When I look back to my childhood, back in the 80s, I want you to know there are certain people that when homecoming rolled around, those, those folks were faithful. You looked at those folks and you knew that they were committed. You could almost just know within your heart their faithfulness to God. Now, there's all kinds of things as, as children. I was in my teen years, and there's all kinds of things that we remember about people. And for me, one of the crazy things that I remember was what they made for the Sunday dinner. Because I had a friend of mine who had a mother that could make the best banana pudding on the planet. And I knew, come homecoming, she was bringing that banana pudding. And I could, I looked for it. And if she didn't show up on homecoming, I was extremely depressed, right? Had another person who made probably the best fried chicken in the entire church. And every, every homecoming, she'd make fried chicken and she'd bring it in. And man, you'd just sit there and you'd be like, oh man, can't wait for that fried chicken, right? Other people made green bean casserole. Other people made corn casserole. Other people made all kinds of different things. By the way, this morning, if you go down and you eat uh, this corn casserole that's down there. If you like it, you can thank me for it. If you don't like it, Addie made it. So you figure out whether or not you like it or not, and that'll determine what you decide of that. But folks, those things you remember, but I want you to know more importantly than what I remember them making, I'll tell you what I remember as a 53-year-old guy today looking back on an 18-year-old boy then, it's this. I remember those people that were faithful to God that laid the foundation in my life by teaching me God's Word, by teaching me and instructing me how to live a faithful Christian life. I remember that and how it has transformed me even back then to where today I'm up here preaching and sharing God's Word with you in the pulpit. And it all started way back in my teen years with those people doing the right thing for God, making the 
making the right choices for God that have helped influence my life to bring me to this point. And I'm here to tell you that that same responsibility that fell to them some 30 plus years ago, 40 plus years ago, is the same thing that falls to you and me this morning. You see, there's going to be a time where these young people here they're going to be celebrating. They're going to be the adults. And they're going to remember, how did so-and-so live their life and how did it influence me in the church? One of the greatest fears I have, because I'm seeing it day in and day out, I'm seeing the church let down this next generation. I, I literally, with all my heart, tried my best yesterday to miss the entire Tennessee ballgame. I had no desire to watch it. I didn't, I didn't want to turn, turn it on. I, I, my blood pressure goes up every time I watch Tennessee. They'll either rip your heart out or they'll se help you celebrate. Either way, I just didn't want anything to do with it. And so I went through the whole entire night not flipping it on. And at about 11.30 last night, I thought, oh, let's go find out what the score is. And they were still playing that half lane game. And it was the last two minutes of that game. I watch this play unfold, and they throw it across the middle. The guy gets marked down, and I'm sitting here, and I'm yelling at the TV. He made the first down, just like everybody else. And I'm sitting here, and I'm watching this play out, and then all of a sudden, I see one of the things that absolutely just ripped my heart out for the University of Tennessee. I saw fans start slinging stuff onto the field. Now, I was appalled by that because it's embarrassing, right? I'm appalled by that because that was poor decision making. And not everybody was making that decision to do that. But those that chose to do that embarrassed all of us, right? And I sat there and I watched that. And I sat there and I just shook my head and I asked myself, are we really at a point where our whole entire life is affected by things that 18-year-olds do on a football field that it would cause us to lose our minds and start throwing stuff onto a football field. And I sat there and I thought, man, that's tragic. And then something dawned on me. What is going to happen 20 years from now when all of a sudden we're sitting there and we're playing Ole Miss and we're playing right back here at Neyland Stadium and that happens to be 20 years from now what they put on the screen about how that had played out. What about the person that took that bottle or took that golf ball or took whatever and launched it out there? What are they going to think of themselves 20 years from now? Because they made the poor decision of launching something Onto the football field. And you, you say, say, Tim, Tim that, that's, that's tragic, that's bad, but what does that have to do with church? And here's where I want to take you this morning. Every decision that we make plays out again down the road. Every decision that we make as a church plays out down the road. You say, well, how does that play out in my life? If I choose not to do something this morning, what's the big deal? It only affects me. Really? Are you sure about that? I would ask this question, what happens if Johnny chooses not to bring his daughter to church the day that she gets saved? Think that's a good decision, Johnny? What happens if your mom and dad chose not to take you to God's house on the day that you asked Jesus Christ to save you? What if the church just decided not to have church that day? What if in that scenario, whoever brought you to the place ran out of gas and said, sorry guys, we can't do it. Any number of decisions that were made that brought you to Christ, those are similar decisions that we're making today that influence other people to come to know Jesus. And if we sit here this morning and we choose not to be obedient, then we fail in our efforts to reach lost people for Jesus just in our own disobedience. And that's where I want to take us this morning. As, as we stand, stand and as we read Hebrews chapter 6. Would you stand with me this morning? Hebrews chapter 6, we're going to begin reading with verse 10. It says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Now listen to this verse 12. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit 
the, the promises. promises. Brother Lucky, would, would you lead us in prayer this morning? morning? And amen, and you may be seated. The, uh, if I was to give anything to this year's homecoming, it is this. Be faithful, be patient, and be diligent. Be faithful, be patient, and be diligent. You see, there are folks in this church that years ago were faithful and were patient and were diligent to do God's work. They were faithful to know that when God told them to do something, they were faithful to do it. They, they were patient that they waited upon the Lord and didn't try and outrun Him, but rather they did it in His time. And they were diligent in that they continually looked for the opportunities to do God's work. Faithful and patient and diligent. And this morning as we come to this time of homecoming, what we ought to want to happen this morning is this, that somewhere out there in the future, if God carries His coming, sending His Son back to, to take us home, if, if Jesus carries His coming, my desire is that 20 years from now, that people, and in particular our children, but people 20 years from now will say, man, I'm so glad that preacher got up and preached God's message and he was faithful to preach it. I'm so glad that he waited for God to give him the words and what to say, that he was patient in the Lord. I'm so glad that he was diligent, that he didn't just let a homecoming service come and go, but he took the time to be obedient during that homecoming service, that he was faithful, patient, and diligent. Because, you know, here's the thing. At that point, I'd be about 73 years old. At 73 years old, as you look out into the future, of whatever life that you're living. 73 years old didn't used to seem, or it didn't look like it's ever going to happen for me. You know, when you're 18 years old, 73 ain't never going to happen, right? 18, you're looking for 19. That's all you're looking for, 20 or 21 or 22. You're, you're just looking for the next day. I asked Addie one time what old was. She said, well, Dad, it's probably 31 or 32. I sat there and I said, why? She said, 31, 32. Addie, you weren't even born until I was 34. Old? I don't feel old. Do you feel old? I don't feel old. Do you feel ancient? I don't feel ancient. Now, some of you may have a different story. Brother Lucky looked at me right there and said, yeah, I feel old. Tim, I'm, I'm a... Folks, I want you to know that my life at 31 seemed like it was just beginning. I didn't feel old. And Patty, in her mind, 31 was old. Now, I bet her attitude towards being old at 31 changes when she turns 30. Wouldn't you think? Oh, 31 is the new 10, right? I mean, we're going back. What I'm trying to get to you to understand is this. Even though at 73 years old, I won't, in my mind, want to feel old, I'm going to know at that point, I'm old. You know how I know that? Because my dad is actually 75, 76 years old right now, and he said at 73, it clicked, I'm closer to leaving this world than I've ever been. And you think about that for me. I'm closer to leaving this world than I've ever been. 73 years of age. I remember my dad when he turned 40. And I remember having a little birthday party that we had for him. And I remember thinking to myself, yeah, dad's old, but man, he is a man of God. No doubt in my mind, if there was anybody getting to heaven, my dad was going. No doubt in my mind, if there was a godly man, it was my daddy. And man, I was proud to call him my dad. Love being able to go around and say, yeah, my dad, Jack Show. Man, he's awesome, right? Proud of my dad. Had a friend of mine who didn't even know who his dad was. He just checked out on him when he was young. He'd come up to me and he'd say, man, I love your dad. 
because he has become my dad. I was proud of that, right? I say that because it, at, at the end of it all, my dad's going to be remembered by my friend as being the coolest dad ever, and he's going to treat him and remember him as his dad. Why? Because he did what he was supposed to do as a godly man. He made sure that he lived a godly life. He made sure that that friend of mine, when he hung out at our house and he spent the night at our house, he went to church on Sunday with us. He was a godly man, and he took care of things in a godly way. So at 73 years of age, as me and my friend now get together, only now we drink coffee as opposed to getting Diet Coke or regular Coke back then. We reminisce about my dad being a godly man. My fear is my kids won't say that about me. My fear is am I living the life that is an impression to them? If they say, yeah, my dad, he was old when I was born, right? He was over 30 when I was born. But my dad was a godly man. Somewhere in your life, you're going to have to make a decision that I am going to be righteous and godly. That I'm going to choose to do the things that I'm supposed to do. And that in, when people reflect back 20 years from now on this homecoming, they're going to reflect back on you and say, you know what, that person that seemed so old way back then, man, they sure were godly. Man, that person that, that just was there and, and was a part of that church, they were doing everything right. And, and this church wouldn't be what it is now if it wasn't for those people doing the godly things that they were doing. I would ask you this, and I want you to be honest with yourself. You don't have to tell me or say anything publicly this morning, but I want to ask you this. Would this church be where it is today if it wasn't for the godly Christians that came before you and did all the work that they've done to make this church what it is today? It would not be what it is today. I want you to read this verse with me one more time. It's verse 10. And I want you to remember this as we go forward. About verse 10 it says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints. Now listen to this. And do minister. Why would they mention minister twice? Why would the writer of this passage say, you minister to the saints and you do minister? Folks, I'm here to tell you what the reasoning for that is. For you to hit this twice, for you to reinforce it twice, it is to focus your attention on the word minister. And they ministered to the saints, and guess what? And they were still doing the ministry. They weren't just done. They didn't just do it when they were young and quit. They continued to do it through the course of their life all the way up to the very end. And in fact, in that last verse that we read, it talks about literally being patient to the end. Literally, there were folks who had already gone on that their words were still being rewarded by God for the things that they had done as righteous to Him. And this morning, I challenge us as a church to do that which is righteous. Now, this morning... If you're here and you're lost, I want you to know something. You have one of the greatest opportunities of anybody today. You have the greatest opportunity this morning right here in this church. You may not believe it, but guess what? Jesus Christ actually has sent you an invitation this morning. And he's going to have me present that invitation to you right now. Here it is. Jesus says to you, you this morning, if you're here and you're lost, this is a special invitation from Jesus. And here's Jesus' invitation. If you're here this morning and you recognize you're lost, Jesus says, if you will come down front this morning of this church, and if you will get along with him today, and if you will ask him, would you forgive me of my sins and save me, Jesus says not only will he do it, but he'll, he'll do it quickly. What's that mean? He will do it instantly. You come. You pray. You ask God to forgive you. You ask God to forgive you of your sins and be Savior of your life. The Bible says he is faithful and he is just and he will do so immediately. That's the invitation you've got. Now let me just explain what that means. 
That, that means, means right now you're sitting in your chair and you're lost. That means coming down front and getting on your knees and praying means now you're saved that quick. Folks, your life can transform in just like that. But you've got to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. you got to ask for forgiveness of sin. you got to put faith in Him. And that is the invitation that Jesus is giving you this morning. The Creator of Creators gives you an invitation this morning to become His. When I was eight years old, I made that choice. And from eight years old till now, you talk about never regretting the choice I made. I have never regretted, not for one single day, accepting Jesus as my Savior. Not one single day. And I'm going to tell you, right now, in your heart of hearts, if you ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior and for you to be forgiven of your sins, I'm here to tell you, there won't be a day go by that you'll ever, ever, ever regret making that decision. And it can be done this morning. Christian, I want you to know that as God has uh, opened your heart up this morning for worship and praise, that there is the opportunity this morning for you to come and commit yourself to Him. Maybe there's something in your life that, that you need removed. Maybe there's something in your life you need to add. But whatever those things are, this morning now is the time for you to come and get along with God and say, God, I've been trying to do it my way, and guess what? I've learned that's not the right way. I want to be faithful to you to do it your way. Today. Whatever it is that God is laying on your heart, I pray that you'll come this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand with your heads bowed and with your eyes closed. I'm going to ask our group to come back, and if you would, get a hymn of invitation ready or just a, a song that you all would sing for our invitation. And with heads bowed and with eyes closed this morning, I want you to know that this is the time and this is the moment and this is what everything has led up to is to this point of you making the decision to be obedient to Him today. I can tell you this. I know this group pretty well. And they didn't come to entertain. I know this group pretty well. And I'll tell you, one of their heart's greatest desires this morning is for this invitation to be the invitation for you that you make the choice. Whatever it is that God's laid on your heart, that you do it. I know this group pretty well, and this group sings for Jesus because they know that in singing for Jesus there's power in His name, and there's power in the decisions that are made this morning at this time during this invitation. The singing has led to this moment. The preaching has led to this moment. All of our gathering and fellowshipping together has led to this moment. This is the time for every person to look to God and say, God, what is it that I need to do? And this morning I encourage you, be faithful. Be obedient, but be faithful, be diligent, be patient in the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that, that you just might open the hearts and minds of the people here this morning, that, Father, if there's one here that's lost, that they might come and just in an instant, with the prayers being spoken, they might experience salvation in their life, and they might accept your invitation to come. Father, for the, uh, the, the Christian here this morning, that they might come and surrender all that they are to you, that, that you might just use each and every person in this room. Father, you said you're not unrighteous to, to remember all the things that we're doing, that, that, Father, you remember everything that we do and you're continuing to reward. And so, God, as we try to be faithful this morning, we ask that it might be a blessing to others. And, Father, that we might grow closer to you. Bless us now during this time of invitation, for it's in your holy and precious name we pray. And with heads bowed and with eyes closed, as they begin to sing, if God spoke to you, would you come?
All right, have you enjoyed, enjoyed the special, special singing, singing this morning? morning? I have. I like, I like the addition to the group, too. Y'all are good. Awesome. Y'all did good. All right, we're, we're going to take, take a love offering. So if the ushers will come, come forward. forward. Um, you, you know, one thing about Josh, Josh they, they never ask for anything when they come. They're, they're always, always willing to come. come but, you know, you know it, it takes gas money. Believe me, we've done this for 10 years. A few of us traveled for 10 years. It takes it takes money to travel in a group. And so... We're going to take a, a love offering up for them. Yes, we do have CDs out here in the foyer. Our wives are going to be out there. Um, oh, God didn't put us in this to make money. We're not doing this to make money. We're here to, like I said earlier, we're here to live it up in the name of God. But we do have CDs, and so what we do is, um, if you wish, you want a CD, if you, uh, you're welcome to one. If you wish to make a donation, they've got a little basket set up out there for, for donations. And that just helps us be able to replace those CDs as, they, as they're depleted. It helps us be able to make more in the future. And uh, so, uh, like I say, y'all are welcome to those. All right. Uh, don't, don't forget, forget we're having, having dinner at the fellowship, fellowship hall. Everyone is invited, invited to the fellowship hall. So come on down and eat with us. Well, I'm going to ask Brother Tony to lead us to the Lord in prayer and also bless our food as you're praying. And as you get down there, if we can, let, our, let the elderly go first and our visitors. And then home folk, you can eat. But uh, y'all get behind me when we get down there. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead Tony. Lord, I just want to thank you for this church. Lord, I just want to thank you for your Holy Spirit that sits out here today. Lord, I just thank you so much for just coming to visit with us. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to bless us.
Just, just know that the, the best, best way, way to show your appreciation for your pastor be here on Sunday. It's, it's awesome. We'd love to have you. Uh, Johnny, I'm going to ask you one more time. Would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? Don't forget, after he prays, just make your way right on down to the fellowship building. And when you get there, just start lining up and, and filling your place. Uh, but Johnny, would you bless the food and dismiss us?